Hello, and welcome back to Analysis with me, Jonathan Steele. In the first half of the program, we were discussing the growing number of court cases in Egypt that are said to be violating human rights. In this half, we'll discuss the decision by Prime Minister David Cameron to launch an, in an investigation into the activities of the Muslim Brotherhood in the UK. It's been reported that MI6 will examine allegations that attacks in Egypt were orchestrated by the Brotherhood in the UK, while MI5 will assess how many leaders have been based in Britain after last year's coup in Egypt, in which the President Mohamed Morsi was ousted. Speaking last week at a press conference, David Cameron said of the investigation, what I think is important about the Muslim Brotherhood is to make sure we fully understand what this organization is, what it stands for, what its links are, what its beliefs are in terms of both extremism and violent extremism. Now, in response to the move, a spokesman for the interim government in Egypt has welcomed the British government's investigation. While, of course, the Muslim Brotherhood has said that it will challenge any improper attempt to restrict its activity in court. So is this investigation justified in terms of national security for Britain, or is it politically motivated and influenced by the relationship between the West and the interim government in Egypt? Remaining with me to discuss this are Mohamed Sudan, who is the UK representative of the Freedom and Justice Party, the Muslim Brotherhood linked party, Sabah Al Mukta, president of the Arab Lawyers Association, Alistair Sloan, a freelance journalist who's written extensively on human rights abuse and censorship issues, and Margaret Gilmore, who is a research senior research associate at the Royal United Services Institute. Welcome to you all. Let me come to you, uh, Mohammed Sudan. I mean, why do you think the British government is doing this investigation? What's the reason? Bismillah ar I mean, my point of view is that the, there are some kind of pressure coming from abroad. Because um, as far as I know, that there are several governments before uh, Mr. Cameron uh, deal with the most brotherhood, which they are insist, which they are exist here in the UK since 40 or 50 years ago. Then the, the UK government, they know as well who are the uh, most brotherhood members, what their thoughts, what their philosophy from a long time ago. Nothing changed. All what changed now is that Egypt, the military authority, they recognize that the Muslim Brotherhood as the uh, um, terrorism uh, movements and also Saudi Arabia. And what I'm really wondering that the Mr. Cameron choose the uh, UK ambassador, uh, uh, former UK ambassador as well, uh, was in Saudi Arabia. But let me tell you that that Saudi Arabia is now is biased. I mean, they, because they already wished the coup from the first second, and they are against the Muslim Brotherhood. And also, there's no too many Muslim Brotherhood in Saudi Arabia then where is the expert coming from? And, of course, the British government has had many contacts with the Muslim Brotherhood. Yeah, Particularly a long during time. the time when yes. President Morsi was there. So yeah. they must know who you are and what you represent. Yeah. And we are very clear. Our activists here in the UK is very clear for the government, for MI6, for everybody. And they know us very well. We have a lot of dialogues together and then nothing to hide. And, and our philosophy in our books, in our websites, it's very clear. Well, um, Alistair, what do you think? I mean, do you think it is politically motivated, this inquiry? I, th I think it can't be anything but politically motivated. I think if you, were, if you were mounting a serious terrorist investigation, you wouldn't announce it at number 10. Um, so I think the fact that there are covert, you know, secretive agencies involved, MI6 and MI5, if, um, that's designed to almost give legitimacy um, to the claims being made by the Saudi government, the UAE government and the Egyptian government that there is a threat. But I think, it's, I think it's totally fabricated. It would be incredibly embarrassing for the British government if they were to find a, a plot, because the Muslim Brotherhood have been operating in the open for a very long time. So if they, if they, if they only manage to find it now, then why haven't they found it before? But do you think um, they're going to end up banning it? I mean, if there's pressure, presumably, from the Egyptian government to ban the Muslim Brotherhood in England and Britain, as they have done in Egypt. I think what, what Sisi's doing with the Muslim Brotherhood is he's kind of conflating political Islamists with jihadists. And that's something which is done very casually um, and unfortunately in, in the West uh, very often. Um, but it's not particularly fair um, that we, 
in London are doing the kind of legwork for CC and, and the, the Saudi Arabians and the United Arab Emirates um, in allowing this smear, because that's essentially what it is. It's saying that if you're a political Islamist, you must have links with terror organisations, and that's a smear. And it's just a real pity that the, uh, the British government has decided to get involved with that. Um, least of all, because you know there are, there are over 500 uh, people sentenced to death um, in Egypt, and it kind of legitimises that. And it's really, really sad for those families to look to uh, to look to London and to see almost a sense of you know we're 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 okay with that. We're kind of backing it. We think there might be something to those allegations that these people are terrorists. And Sabah al Mutar, I mean, critics of the Muslim Brotherhood would say it is linked to Hamas, we know that, and Hamas has been designated a terrorist organisation. So there is a, some sort of connection on terrorism, isn't there? Well, I think we must understand really uh, what Cameron has said in context. This is not a criminal investigation. People tend to think to treat this reporting as if it's a criminal investigation. That is not a criminal investigation. This is yielding to pressure. The Saudis, the Egyptians and the UAEs are putting pressure on, on Cameron, on Britain, to do something about it. So now we announce that we are going to investigate this matter, not investigate people or activities. Or So we are going to have a report so that in six months' time or three months' time, when the UAEs and the Egyptians and the, the Saudis come to Cameron again, he's going to say, look, we've done our own work. We have found nothing. Do you want us to announce and say that you are wrong, or shall we just keep it quiet? So, and this idea that somehow linking it with this uh, terrorist act which killed the, the, the British tourists there, the idea of that is to justify why the British government is spending money on a report which is not really, nobody knows why we need it, especially that the British government and the Muslim Brotherhoods have known each other for a very long time. As a matter of fact, in the Arab world, in Egypt in particular, there is an accusation that the Brotherhood is a creation of Britain. So th this idea that I, I, I've read one of the uh, uh, experts here saying that if we, are, if we are certain that there is some, or if we are feeling that there is some criminal activity, then you wouldn't do a report you would have a criminal investigation. And you would get uh, not just the MI5 and 6, but you get Scotland Yard, you get the, uh, the uh, fraud squad, you get all the other elements which are part of the judiciary, part of the criminal system, to investigate it. You wouldn't announce it. But this one is a public relations exercise. Uh, now, there may be, at the end of the day, some elements within the Brotherhood who are involved in some criminal activity. It's at that point those individuals will be taken to be a threat either to Britain or to outside. Indeed, we, we here in Britain, we don't accept people to conspire to commit terrorist acts outside the UK. It's not only the UK. We want, everybody wants to stop this terrorism uh, uh, anywhere in the world. So, but this is not it. This one is more of a political exercise. Uh, it's answering this, these questions from the Arab countries. Well, Margaret Gilmore, I mean, do you take that sort of view too, that this is just a political exercise, a public relations exercise, in fact, and that the British government won't end up actually changing policy in any way? I agree with an awful lot of what um, we've heard there. Um, I agree with what our last speaker has just said. I think it's unlikely on what we know at the moment. I wouldn't say it's just a PR exercise, but I do think um, it, it is political. I think that things may have changed. There was some intelligence coming through last year that maybe some of the leaders were tending to move to London. There were also some individuals that they were, the um, agencies were concerned about who may have been linked to uh, the Brotherhood and who were uh, leaning towards extremism. And I think the feeling was that there had to be an investigation into all of this to ensure that the present policy still stands, to ensure we know what we're talking about, that the UK knows exactly who and what the Muslim Brotherhood in the UK is here and now and to be able then to give those answers abroad um, and I think it's also important to the UK to make sure that they don't put themselves in a position where people with extremist views whatever will start using London as the only place where their organization isn't banned and therefore it becomes a sort of focal point for people who aren't totally at the extreme but maybe close to it. But, I mean, assuming it's political, as you say, I mean, then, as Sabah hinted, I mean, in six months' time or nine months' time, whatever, when the 
investigation is complete, then the government, British government will still be faced with the same dilemma, because if they say there's nothing there, then politically that will irritate the Saudis and the Egyptian government. Uh, if they say there is something there, it will irritate a lot of other people. So it doesn't really do more than play for time, does it? As with so many things in the Middle East, um, you know, you're not going to please everyone. There'll be two different um, uh, views on that. So I think that uh, that has to be put aside. Uh, I think that they will at least have answers that they can give if people ask these questions, whatever their view. The key thing is what is right security-wise for the UK, uh, for London in particular, and um, that's what they're trying to work out. It's our interests we've got to put first on this one. It's British, UK security interests first. Well, thank you. We've now actually been joined by Ben Harris Quinney, who is chairman of the conservative think tank, the Bow Group. Thank you for coming on. I d you obviously didn't hear all the discussion that we've had. But uh, do you think this British government move to investigate the Muslim Brotherhood is really necessary, given that Britain has had con contacts with the Muslim Brotherhood when they were governing Egypt last mm. year. So what new do they need to find out? I think it's appropriate, and um, I don't have access to the intelligence, but I would imagine that this is certainly not the first time that the, the, the British intelligence services have investigated the, the Muslim Brotherhood. Um, I, I would agree that I think there's a political aspect to this. Clearly, um, there was a, a recent trip by Prince Charles to... Uh, to Saudi Arabia, which was made um, under the auspices of, of, of a diplomatic trip as opposed to uh, um, a, a royal visit. Um, and I think certainly there are concerns in, in the Saudi government about the Muslim Brotherhood. Um, but I would actually be quite surprised, and of course we don't know what the security services are doing and all the different groups they're looking into, but I would be quite surprised if they weren't looking into the Muslim Brotherhood because whilst I don't think the Muslim Brotherhood are um, you know, all, all extremists or all dangerous, there, there have been links between the Muslim Brotherhood and extremist forces uh, outside of the UK in the past, so I would frankly expect the intelligence services to no, at least observe it. To announce it. I think that was the point that two of our speakers well, I think said. That's, I think that's the political point. I mean, there are two questions. What's the political point and what's the, the, the security necessity? I think looking into the, to the Muslim Brotherhood is, is probably a security necessity. It's the sort of thing that the intelligence services should be doing. That's what they're there for. Um, announcing it, I think that was almost certainly a political move, and that was a, a political move um, in, in, in light of the, of the feelings of the Saudi government, I would imagine. Well, Mohammed Sudan, I mean, are you concerned that this momentum could develop. First of all, you have an investigation, then you have to sort of do something at the end of the investigation. Are you concerned that in some way they could ban your activities? If, even if they don't ban the whole organisation, they could restrict and say you can't sort of make any statements of any kind, any political moves? First of all, we are not worried at all about this. We understand that this is a political, as everybody said, and this is a message coming from the UK government to abroad. I understand that if it's something serious, then Mr. Cameron never have to announce it in the parliament. Then this investigation has to be a secret, not to be, be announced like this. And we know who we are. We know that what our philosophy, and we understand that we are very clear. And then nothing to hide and nothing to fear from. And we understand that 100% the, the democratic country of UK will not ban us because we are not dangerous. We raise our members for all the respect for the others, respect the laws in the ground which they leave or the, the countries which they leave. And I think, and also we raise our youth and kids to respect everything, to respect neighbors and, and to respect their religion and their faith. And I think this is good way to raise the kids to be a very good people in the future for the country and very faithful for the, the country which they live in. And uh, for all, 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 and all of all of these, they are Britain. Before they are belong to the Muslim Brotherhood, now they are Britain. More, more and the members of the, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood now in the UK are Britain citizens. Mm -hmm. Then they are belong to this crown. They are belong to this soil right now. Margaret Gilmore, let me come back to you. I mean, are other Western countries doing the same thing as the United States having investigation, or maybe they've already banned the Muslim Brotherhood? What's the position? Do you 
Are you up to date? Um, I, I would be very surprised if other countries aren't um, checking it out. I think uh, because we have got evidence of people coming over here from Egypt quite a lot, um, it relates to us in particular, but it would be very surprising if other countries weren't checking out and, and deciding what to do. Um, as for America, they would tend to keep uh, the security side of these things quieter, probably, historically, than we would. But I think for us, it's I don't see any hidden agenda. and uh, But I do see the necessity for some kind of investigation in the interest of our security. And Sabah, I mean... Well, well I, I think we, we, uh, it's, it's a very good move. Uh, because if there are three important countries, like Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and the UAE, say that these, this organization is a terrorist organization. It's only incumbent on civilized countries to actually try and find out whether these accusations are actual, real, or are they politically motivated. And one of the ways of doing that is actually to, to look again into the workings and the organization and the philosophy and the idea and all the, all the relationship that the brotherhood. And I think at the end of the day, that's the only way we can take this haze of things. Because you have here we have a, a, a political movement which has been around for almost half a century. Everybody knows what they are, etc., etc. Suddenly you have three countries who decide they are absolute terrorists and they, they, we've seen what they have done. And it's only, in a, it's only right that all the other countries have to look at it properly. And I, I think we, in, in this country, because we have rule of law, actually, it's, it's, more than, it's more prevalent than even in Europe or the USA, let alone the Arab countries. I think it's, it's, there's nobody should, should be worried about somebody looking at this. And at the end of the day, if there is a danger, then that danger for the interest of the nation and everybody else must be eliminated. Now, I don't think we'll get to the point where Britain is going to ban. The, this, is a, this is an Arab-style thing, or even a Turkish one, if you want. Uh, but this is not, not the appropriate way of dealing with things here, unless there is some reason. But ben, doesn't this show quite a big shift in British foreign policy since the coup in July last year? I mean, at that stage, the line from Western governments was, if you're having elections, the new government is having elections, they must be inclusive. And that was implying that they shouldn't even ban the Muslim Brotherhood, they should allow them to have a candidate in the new elections. Now we're suddenly, we're accepting that they've been banned in Egypt and we don't seem to be saying anything about that at all. Well, I think our position on Egypt is, has been slightly confused because so many pieces were, were moving around. And, and I don't think that the, the British government in Egypt or in, in many other instances in, in the Arab Spring um, necessarily knew exactly who the, the new forces coming into government or potentially coming into government would be. And of course, the, the UK government has a long track record of, of supporting the, the previous Egyptian regime um, that, of course, banned, effectively banned the, the Muslim Brotherhood from, from uh, having any role in, in Egyptian politics. So, um, you know, this is, this is not necessarily an about face in terms of the, the position of the UK government because we were there before. Um, so, I, I, and, and also, I think that, I mean, as has been said, the UK government's not saying we're banning the Muslim Brotherhood. The UK government's not even saying that the Muslim Brotherhood are necessarily a threat. All, all the UK government is saying is that the, the, the Muslim Brotherhood is one of the groups that are being investigated by the security services. No, but I think the point I'm make, I was making, and perhaps Alistair, you might like to deal with it, is, is this is a change of UK policy, because even if Britain isn't banning it, we're accepting that it's been banned in Egypt and we've stopped talking about inclusive politics anymore in Cairo. We, we're just accepting what they're doing. Yeah, I think it is a change in, in UK policy. I think it was, it was democracy as long as we got the, uh, the result that we wanted, which uh, unfortunately is not, is not real democracy. Um, I think the broader problem, though, is that the, the foreign policy of, of David Cameron is, has been very reactive. So he's been told by the Saudis or the United Arab Emirates or, or Egypt, or whoever it is, that you need to legitimise our crackdown on the Brotherhood. And he's just jumped. And if you look at the Foreign Office, I mean, officials from the Foreign Office spoke to the Financial Times and pointed out that this actually flew in the face of all the work that they've been doing with the Muslim Brotherhood to try and understand more about them, to try and uh, prevent radicalisation. Um, and as you know, David Cameron, he's quite naive when it comes to foreign policy. We've seen that on a number of issues. Um, uh, Putin, Syria, and this is just another one where he, he, he's been very reactive and I, and I think it's kind of diminished our stance in the Middle East as well because we're going to be seen as the lackeys of uh, Saudi Arabians 
any time we want to sell them some fighter jets, it's going to be a case of, OK, well, what can we get out of you this time? Uh, this time it was the Muslim Brotherhood investigation. God knows what it will be next time. Well, then, I mean, is, is that fair, lackey of the Saudis, Britain? I don't think it's fair to say lackey of, of the Saudis, but I think what is true about British foreign policy is that it's very short term. Uh, it's very short termist. It, it doesn't take a long term approach to international affairs. And I think that's, that's dangerous and that's difficult in terms of building um, a clear narrative on, on Britain's position in the world. And as I say, I think where regards the Arab Spring um, and, and intervention in, in, in Syria as well, David Cameron has. Um, stepped forth and supported parties that actually, with, with greater um, investigation, he may have not been so willing to support. Um, and I think you know, part of that is to do with the, the Arab Spring just being an extraordinary event where um, everything was thrown up in the air and no one knew where the pieces were going to fall. But then in such a situation, rather than being reactive, I think it makes sense to actually take a step back and to take a more considered approach. And I think David Cameron has come around to that view, but unfortunately there have been some, some questionable moves in, in foreign policy terms in, in the period that, is, that has gone before. Mm. OK, well, thank you for that. And we've now actually come to the end of this episode of analysis. So I'd just like to thank all my guests and, of course, you at home for watching. Please tune in again for future discussions. And don't forget, you can keep up with the discussion by following us on Twitter at the address below or by following Islam Channel Current Affairs on Facebook. Until next time, thank you and goodbye.